I'm going to continue my video about the fake history of Saint Augustine. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you missed something, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I hope you guys can enjoy this video. We are told the Star Fort is ancient, but the other buildings are recent. They built one absolutely magnificent structure, and then nothing else impressive for the next few hundred years. One mega structure, and after that, only wooden huts. That's unusual. Then, in the late 1800s, Henry Flegler came and made St. Augustine the town of marvelous architecture that it is today. So marvelous in fact that Clint Eastwood, Will Smith, Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Jack Nicholson own homes there. This building was also allegedly built by Henry Flegler as a Presbyterian church in 1889 and as a memorial to his daughter. It only took one year to build. It was built at truly superhuman speed. I asked the great oracle, Google, how long it takes to build a cathedral, and got this answer. 250 to 300 years. Wow. But Google doesn't know superhero Henry Flegler, who has a cathedral design planned and constructed within just a year. Unfortunately, I found no construction photos of this world record accomplishment. When a person who is linked to some of the greatest con artists of all time tells you he built a cathedral, no, an entire city, within a year, isn't that grounds to be skeptical. Almost all buildings are said to have been designed by Carr and Hastings, architects from New York, who apparently made many iconic buildings around the US, including the world-famous New York Public Library. The buildings they made in St. Augustine have no resemblance to the ones they made elsewhere. The architects only opened their practice in 1886, and in the same year, Flegler started building structures in St. Augustine. What a rapid rise to success. This is one of the interior ceilings of the Hotel Alcazar, now Flegler College. Flegler claimed to be a lifelong Presbyterian Christian. The symbolism used in his buildings, while beautiful, doesn't really resemble any Christian tradition I know. Normally, Presbyterian churches around the country were known as modest wooden buildings such as this. This is the church in 1891, just a few years after it was newly completed. The photo was taken by George Barker of Niagara Falls, New York. The new church doesn't look that new to me. It has signs of wear. There is a coloration line, as if the building had been underwater or underground for some time. I've visited St. Augustine three times. On each visit, my suspicion of there being something wrong with its history, grew. Yes, I doubt these structures were made in 1888 or 1889 by Henry Flegler. No, I don't doubt someone as rich as Flegler could have made them in such a short time. The Rockefeller family had enough money to finance all of these projects. I doubt it based on everything else I've learned about ancient America. The strange-looking buildings have often turned out to be much older. As previously explained, buildings that looked like this were used in world expos, claimed to have been built as temporary exhibition halls. Here's a beautiful one in Buffalo, New York around the turn of the century. Many were said to have burned down in accidental fires or intentionally demolished because they had only been temporary. Flegler also built absolutely massive buildings in other places in Florida within one year. For example, both of these hotels in Palm Beach took one to two years each to build in 1894 and 1896. Modern construction companies have a lot to learn from Henry Flegler it seems. I've seen much smaller buildings take years to build. I'm not saying it's impossible with enough workers and unlimited funds. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any documentation about who these workers were, how they were recruited, how these places were built, and what building techniques were used. They just churned out one massive structure after another. The superhero also built the massive buildings in Miami, Jacksonville, Ormond Beach and other places. Like so many other places of the time, St. Augustine experienced a fire in 1914 that burned down most of the town, but Flegler's structures remained. St. Augustine experienced another major fire in 1887, the same year Flegler was starting to build there. Strange how entire cities burned down in those days. Who knows what disappeared in the fire? Why were Flegler's buildings spared? This fire happened during World War I. Was it really just a fire? Mere fire doesn't cause rocks to crush, only explosions impacts and bombings do that. 
This is the San Marco Hotel in 1885. It is said to have been built in 1884 by a man named Isaac Crufts. It would have been Flegler's greatest competitor had it not burned down in 1887. The major tourist attractions of St. Augustine, according to guidebooks, is the oldest wooden schoolhouse in the United States, built in 1706. Imagine this architectural feat, hundreds of years after they had star forts and pyramids, we'll get to those soon. The Europeans that accomplished building those grand structures couldn't put more than a small wooden hut together as their school. I hopped online and discovered the town existed on the oldest maps of Florida. It's been around for over 500 years. Unfortunately, there is close to zero documentation on what St. Augustine used to look like on drawings, paintings, postcards or photos before the 1880s. For a 500-year-old place, that's very unusual. Where has all the documentation gone? Is it normal that a town exists for 500 years with almost no development? Knowing that humans love to develop, it's highly unlikely. This 1562 map of Florida already features St. Augustine, see upper right. Here's a 1607 Mercator map showing St. Augustine at the bottom, along with strange long gone strange sounding places such as Aturia, Halinichanir, Athri, Aladachara, and Achirachu, Salinichali, etc. Here's a 1706 map showing St. Augustine with castle like buildings. I couldn't shake the feeling the city had been architecturally developed long before Henry Flegler came along. This map confirms my hunch. But where did these high towers disappear to, and why aren't they depicted on old drawings or paintings? According to the Library of Congress, this map was made in 1762. The map is deliciously interesting for researchers of alternate history. St. Augustine is as spread out as it is today. There is a center, and then left and right of it you have suburbs. You see a line drawn from the old star fort, Castillo de San Marcos, to another star fort named Negru Fort, also called Fort Mos on other maps. Downtown St. Augustine is another fort in and of itself, and its interior is well developed. The two townships on either side of the star forts are called Indian towns. One Indian town has a church, that is, on other maps, called Indian Church. For the researchers who claim that the star forts had something to do with energy generation and dissemination, it's interesting that a line was drawn through the towns. It could also be nothing more mysterious than a road, but I didn't find this line on other maps that show roads. What is Fort Negru? Official records say that it was a military fort held by black soldiers. All I learned in school is that black people had been brought to America as slaves to plantation farmers. I never learned that the ancient black people had their own armies operating of their own fortresses. Official history explains this by saying that Spanish Florida granted black slaves asylum. It's interesting that this asylum entailed a fort, weapons and an army. I won't outright call this fake history, the idea that these black soldiers are asylum beneficiaries, but it sure seems like a lot of things were omitted from our school books. This timeline of African Americans on Wikipedia only refers to blacks in terms of slavery. It even talks of African slaves in St. Augustine. Not once does it mention blacks in any other function. Here's a 1671 drawing of a still fortified St. Augustine. It's interesting that everyone, including what looks like royalty, are black. These certainly don't look like asylum seekers. I'm not implying that Africans were not slaves, but old images and maps tell us there was more going on than the timeline shows. If you guys find this video interesting, I'll make a part 3.